Hey guys, welcome. Thank you all so much for tuning in. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Kat. I am a head coach at JPS Health and Fitness. And this is part two of a four part series that is managing our physical and mental health in lockdown. Okay, so for today's episode, we are gonna be focusing on nutrition during lockdown. So that's what the focus of today is going to be. So I just wanna say quickly before we get started that the advice and tips I'm gonna give, these aren't specifically for weight loss or weight gain or any body composition goals like that. This is simply advice for having a diet that is higher in nutrient intake and just good for our overall physical health. So that's what this is about. Okay, so let's just start with some basics. So when it comes to our nutrition, sometimes when we try to fix too many things at once, you know, we decide we're starting on Monday and we're gonna fix this, this and this, we stick to that in the short term, but then it's too many changes and it's too hard and it's too much effort and the problem is that we don't sustain that in the long term. And then we revert back to old habits or things that are easier or whatever. So for today's video, I'm gonna take a bit of a different approach. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline four key tips that you can work on starting today, right now, and after I outline those four key pieces of advice, I want you to choose two of them and start working on them from today, right? So, of course, it would be good to, you know, implement all four of these strategies, but that comes back to trying to change too many things and then it's too hard and we don't stick to it and whatever. So, I'm going to say four key things for general improved health during lockdown. And of the four, I want you to choose two. All right, so let's get stuck into them. Okay, so item number one, it's gonna sound super basic, but this key advice is to have vegetables in two meals every single day. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, vegetables, like big shocker. A recent study, well, 2017 to 2018, Australian study from the Australian Bureau of Statistics found that only 7.5% of Australian adults are actually consuming the recommended daily intake of vegetables on a daily basis, right? 7.5%, that's like less than one in 10 of us, okay? So my advice to you is instead of trying to have you know veggies all the time and i'm not going to say you know you need to have veggies with every single meal i want you to just choose two of your meals every day that you add a serving of veggies to start with that so it might be like with your toasted sandwich at lunch you add um capsicum and eggplant and you have a serve of veggies on the side with dinner or it might be like chopped up carrots and celery, you know, with hummus as your afternoon snack to replace something else. Or whatever it is, make it easy, make it something that you like, but it needs to be in two meals every single day. Okay? And we all know that veggies are a great source of carbohydrates, low calorie, good for our fiber intake. We know veggies are good for us, so... That is item number one, veggies, two meals every single day. Okay, item number two is to have a lean protein source in every main meal. So when I say main meals, I mean your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, most of us already know that protein is, of course, good for our uh, recovery from our muscles, from the training that we're doing, and protein is also the hardest macronutrient out of proteins, fats, and carbs. Protein is the hardest for our body to break down and digest. So it keeps us fuller for longer, right? 
Now, on the topic of protein, I just want to quickly clarify something for everybody. Just a friendly reminder, there's a difference between foods that contain protein and foods that are actually a high protein source. And I have some little props just to give a bit of an example, just sort of for something a bit fun and different. So these muesli bars, they say protein bars on them, right? And, but when you look on the back at the nutrition label, each of these bars only actually has five grams of protein in it. Five grams, that's very, very small, right? But when you just quickly see them on the shelf, it's like, oh, protein bars. You know, they might be high in protein. So something like Chobani yogurt, right, has, sorry, uh, protein has, 17.6 grams of protein per serving and a serving is 180 grams so basically if you have 180 grams of yogurt you will get that 17.6 grams of protein whereas if you have one of these protein bars or these so-called protein bars you'll get five grams of protein anyway i messed that up a little bit but guys the point is when i say have a protein source in your main meals i'm talking about eating something that has at least you, know, you want to have at least 10 grams ideally more around the sort of 20 to 25 gram mark for protein right i don't want anyone to fall into the trap of thinking that you know something that maybe says it has protein or maybe contains some protein I don't want anyone to fall into the trap of having that as their protein source because of course consuming something with only five grams of protein, we're not going to, you know, maximize those benefits of fullness and recovery for our muscles, etc. compared to when we're eating something that's like, you know, 20 grams roughly. Okay. So that is item number two. Can, uh, eating a high protein source in every main meal. So, you know, yogurt, eggs, red meat, fish, chicken, there's lots, but those are just a few examples. Okay, so item number three is to substitute our refined simple carbohydrates in our main meals with complex carbohydrates. Okay, so when I talk about complex carbs, these are, think of like dark grainy carbs. So think about things like whole grains, brown rice, wholemeal bread, oats. Pretty much a complex carb is something that is made up of complex structures and it's harder for our body to break down and digest. So it keeps us fuller for longer. Also, these carbs are generally more nutrient dense, right? And they're closer to their original form. So they haven't been like refined and processed. Whereas when we compare to simple carbs, simple carbs are things like white bread, white sugar, white pasta, white rice, pretty much carbohydrates that are in simpler forms. So they're easier for our body to break down and process so they don't keep us as full often these carbs aren't as high in nutrients and sometimes but not always they're a bit higher in calories <clears throat> not all the time but sometimes but anyway the actionable point about this is if in each of our main meals so breakfast lunch and dinner we can substitute our refined carbs our like those white simple carbs with a complex carb, we're gonna get the benefits of consuming more nutrients and eating foods that keep us fuller for longer. So that is the key takeaway point there. Okay, so item number four, the final thing, the final uh, tip I'm gonna give for today is to reduce your trans fat intake by half on a weekly basis. So 
I'm just going to quickly break down what a trans fat is. So out of our macronutrients, we've got proteins, fats, and carbs. Out of our fats, we have good fats and we have bad fats. Out of our bad fats, one of the kinds of bad fats are called trans fats. Now, trans fats can be either natural or they can be artificial. The natural kind of trans fats aren't so much of a concern. It's the artificial kind of trans fats that I wanna talk about today. So artificial trans fats are found in foods like takeaway deep fried foods. So like burgers, chicken nuggets, fries, um, pastries, pies, sausage rolls, caked, baked goods, frozen pizzas. Basically a lot of foods <laughs> that taste good unfortunately have trans fats in them. Now, trans fats are quite hazardous, sorry, hazardous for our health because basically they're bad for our cholesterol, our heart health. They contribute to risk of cardiovascular disease. They contribute to you know, unwanted weight gain, increasing obesity levels, etc. So trans fats are a big public health problem because of course with things like, you know, when you think about things like Uber Eats, for example, it's like there's such a growing availability of this food and platforms like Uber Eats make it so easy for us to just, you know, literally sit on our ass, tap a few buttons on our phone and get whatever food we want to deliver to us when we're maybe feeling a bit lazy and we don't want to cook and we just want something that tastes good. So there's, even though there's a growing awareness, like all these foods I've listed, we all know that they're, you know, unhealthy, but there's this growing availability of this food. So from a public health perspective, it's like we're eating more and more and more of this food that's bad for our health. So my coming back to um, looking after our physical health and lockdown, this item number four, this tip I want to put forward to you is I'm not going to say, you know, cut this food out completely, but let's be realistic. The goal is if you can cut out your, or you can, sorry, reduce your intake of these kinds of foods by half, that is already a really good step. So let's say, for example, you might be someone who you get takeaway deep fried food twice a week. If you can cut that to once a week, you are doing yourself a really big favor from a long-term health perspective, right? That's just an example. So if you can cut down the intake by half, that's already off to a great start. So guys, remember, I'm not saying that all fats are bad. I just want to make that really clear. I'm talking specifically about artificial trans fats. Those are the ones that we want to be really, really aware of. Okay, so guys, that's it for the four suggestions. So let's just recap over these really quickly. Suggestion number one is consuming vegetables in two meals per day every single day. Suggestion number two is to have a lean protein source. So aim for that sort of at least 15 to 20 grams of protein in every main meal per day. Item number three is to substitute our simple carbohydrates for complex carbs in our main meals every single day. So our breakfast, lunch and dinner, look at what you can substitute there. And item number four is reducing our intake of trans fats meals. So sorry, meals containing those trans fats by half on a weekly basis. And I'm saying weekly here because the, the first three items I've given that as like a daily goal. The reason I've said weekly for the trans fat intake is because I know that a lot of you watching this likely, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you might not have things containing trans fats every single day, but it's when you 
look over like sort of a week to week basis. It's like you might look at certain meals that you have that you can make substitutes for. Okay, so guys, those are the four items. Now, I know that a lot of you who are watching this right now, you might be thinking, yeah, yeah, like veggies, protein, I already know this stuff. And that's okay, like that's great if you already do. And the problem is that a lot of us know this stuff, but we don't actually do it. Like that's the real issue here. I mean, look at, you know, the vegetable consumption, for example, it's like, we all know veggies are healthy. We all know we should be eating our veggies, yet only 7.5% of Australian adults are actually consuming the recommended daily intake of vegetables. It's like, we, we have this knowledge, but we're not putting it to use. So the point of today's video and the reason that I'm, you know, outlining four steps and I'm telling you to work on two things is I want you to take action. It's like we have this knowledge, but what good is it if we're not actually applying it and we're not actually getting the health benefits from it, right? So four things, I want you to pick two. And I want to finish on a little quote, which is from one of my favorite books. And um, it's from a Dale Carnegie book. And basically the quote is, the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. So we know this stuff, but now we're going to start doing it. And guys, when we are eating well and we're looking after our health, we feel so much better. Okay, do this for yourself. It's really important. Please look after your physical health during lockdown. And lastly, just coming back to that point I made at the start of episode one for this series, don't wait for lockdown to be over to then take action. Don't say to yourself, okay, I'm just going to eat whatever for now, but, you know, then when things go back to normal, I'll, I'll start, you know, meal prepping again or whatever it is. Today's not about meal prepping, but the point I'm making is start now. So pick your two items, start now, take action today. It's really, really important to look after your physical health. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you all um, gain something out of today. I hope you're all feeling inspired to take action. Um, feel free to send me a message if you have any questions or you know, feel free to maybe comment on the video with the two things that you're going to start implementing. I'd love to see that. Okay. Thanks for listening, guys. See you later.